Hi guys, this is Josh over at Circuit Specialist. You might remember me from last week on our Circuit TV broadcast on our Facebook page. If you don't know what I'm talking about, why don't you head on over, give us a like, check it out. Many things to see. Today, we're going to be finishing talking about prototyping. Our station of choice, the CSI 75 watt. This station is great. There's so many user defined settings. It's comparable to stations that are actually in a much higher price bracket but you can get this over at www.circuitspecialist.com today we're going to be talking about prototyping and soldering we're actually moving from a breadboard design like our doorbell circuit on our analog baker board trainer moving it over to our perf boards we have four different sizes known as the 64 series. 64-8931, which is the smallest. 64-8932, which is this size. The 64-8933 and the 64-8934. The thing that's great about these is they have copper plated on one side to solder to. They are non-conductive on the other side and anywhere else where there's not copper plating. And they actually have matching boxes that these fit directly into for a clean and sleek uh, prototyping design look. So what we're going to do today is actually move this circuit which is basically a, a doorbell with a light up buzzer. We're going to move it over to our perf board and actually try soldering in. What I like to do first is start off with a positive and negative lead. That way we know where we're tying into. And for that I'll be using some of our breadboard jumper wires. If I could get them out. Here is one that we'll be using for the ground. Here's one that we'll be using for the ground and one that we'll be using for the hot or our positive. And what we'll do is we'll push it through on the side that has no um, copper, copper holes and we'll actually use the other side, as you can see where it comes through right here, for the side that we're soldering to. What we're going to do, set this down. Grab our soldering station with our temperature already set. And press the buzzer. <laughs> I'm actually going to remove that. That way we're not accidentally scaring ourselves. One technique I like to do when I'm soldering is hold the tip down to the copper um, trace or the hole and actually semi-touch one side of the lead that's coming through. Then as I let this heat up, I will slowly tap the other side with solder to see when it starts melting. See, at that point you can see it's melted, we got a good connection. And we'll go ahead and use this ground. Awesome. So, next thing we'll do is we will design the rest of our circuit. And we'll put our resistor in. Resistor in. A resistor in and then I'm going to use my LED LED and Buzzer. As we flip it over, I like to bend the leads over, that way it keeps things from falling out. I will actually get to soldering these.
I hate the fact I always get soldering smoke in my face. So often at homes I use the BK486, which is a, a soldering a, a fan, basically an extruder fan, which will pull these toxic fumes away from your nose. That way you're not smelling those. For you guys that are a little more health conscious like me. <laughs> See, we got some leads going on here. And what we're going to do is tie these together by simply bending them over, wrapping them together. We'll put a glob of solder on. See, none of these um, holes or traces are connected on the perf board, which is great for prototyping. And we actually have um, a circuit scribe pen that we carry now, which is conductive ink so you can actually draw between traces rather than having to have long streams of solder um, and this works very well so this I will tie to the power over here also going to tie the one leg of the push button this and we basically fold these all down and solder. This solder is um, great. It's MG Chemicals, and it's actually a brand that we carry at Circuit Specialist. I love it. Real good properties. Flows nice and smooth. And should be that. One look at that. What we're going to do is tie the positive leg to here. I actually made a, a design error by connecting the resistor straight to the power. Um, I actually want it connected to the other end of the push button, but I can simply fix that by cutting out this section right here with a pair of side cutters. And as I continue to solder, so I'm using actually a finer tip on this um, iron than what comes with it. And normally what comes with it is a KD-M-1. I believe this is the 1.1C, um, I believe, a smaller conical tip. It's a much finer tip. Either way, a better thing to do when uh, buying, buying the 75 watt soldering station would be to get the bundle, the bundle 150 actually comes with 10 different tips. And um, any of you guys who are familiar with soldering know how invaluable different tips can be. Used for many different jobs. Um, and so I have this tip cleaner, excellent, with a rosin core, nicely cleans off your tips. And I'm going to grab the side cutters here and I'll actually remove that piece. So let's see what we got going on here. I have my button bringing power in to here, which goes to the resistor, which would light the LED. So this needs to be connected back to ground. For that, I will use one of these jumper wires to complete our circuit. See, plug it in there. I have the leads right next to each other. That's one of those jumper wire kits that um, are included with the breadboards if you do decide to buy one. If not, I believe it's the MJW-70 or MJ-70W is the part number for just the jumper wires. Uh, please excuse my crude soldering job at the moment. But this is the beauty of prototyping. Doesn't mean it'd be pretty. It needs to work. I have this lead over here. This is gone. I have the negative connected. And the last thing we need is our buzzer, which will also be tied before the resistor. Make sure it's before the resistor to our 
switch. And over. Trim off the extra leads. And we have a simple circuit. So, if I know half of what I'm doing, if I have any idea of what I'm doing, I can actually use this CSI 3005 SM. This is a 0 to 30 volt zero to five amp adjustable power supply. Now we did design this circuit to work on 12 volts. That's the resistor calculation that we included. So let's change this up to 12 volts. And it does have a coarse and fine adjustment. Oh, 12.2, looks good to me. Uh, and should have power there. There we go. And this is basically how you have a more permanent solution. This is how you design a more permanent solution other than your breadboard. So things are, are all put together here. I can go ahead and take this, put it in a box, let the LED stick out, make a hole for the speaker, put the button on the side, put it inside a nice little box and have a, a whole unit. Oh, I didn't know I was looking right at me. Here you go. <laughs> but this is basically your, your final step in prototyping. This is how you would design a board, put it inside a box, make it look nice and clean, and uh, you take it to your investors or whoever you have basically funding your project and you go from there. Next step is manufacturing, which hopefully we'll talk to you about in the future. But thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you guys again next time.